Now it's time to take a look at another basic building block of programming. Uh, we're going to take a look at arrays. Uh, arrays give us a way of dealing with collections of objects now, and they need to be objects of the same type. But that doesn't limit us to having more than one kind of object, it just means they have to fall within the same hierarchy. So before we go any further or deeper, let's just get a project started here to demonstrate some of the basics of an array. So I'll call my, I'll call my project arrays. And I'm going to show you the basic syntax and building blocks of how it works. So for example, normally you'd say you have like an integer called um, you know, value 1, and it's 10. And then you could do something like system.out.print that value 1. Now that's great if you know ahead of time that you only need one item. But what if I don't know how much uh, I need to set aside? Like what if I need to ask the user how many values they want? I wouldn't be able to do this program in that case. So what I'm going to do is just expand a little bit here, and I'll put a prompt here that first says system.out.println how many values do you want? And then I'll read it in. So I'm going to need the scanner here. And then I will read that in from the user here. Okay, so now that I know how many values this person wants from me, um, I can't, ahead of time with any of the techniques we've known, be able to tell Java that unless I use um, an array. There are other da data structures, but of course array is probably one of the most fundamental ones that we learn at the beginning of programming. So the way I do it is I say to Java, I'm going to get some integers, but it's not just a regular integer, it's an array. So that's what these brackets here mean. This means integer array, and we give it a name just like we would normally. So let's call this data equals new integer array. And in here, what I have to specify is how many I'm asking for. And in this case, they've told me. So there's no way I could have set aside that um, ahead of time without having some way of doing it dynamically. Because otherwise, you know, I could create all the values here, but what if they want three values and I've only set aside two? Um, what if they only use one of the values and I've got all these extra ones here? So in this way, I've got exactly as many items as they've asked for, and then I can go through each one of them. So I can store them into a program here. And one of the items that arrays have is they have this property called length. So what I'm able to do is uh, this is a loop that will start at position 0 and move its way to the end of the array. Now arrays are 0 based just like you um, know from strings. So the first position in an array is position 0. That means if I have 10 items, my items would go from 0 to 9 which is why this could not be equal to the length because that would mean I'd gone one past the end. So um, be careful, that's a common pitfall that people have when they're new to arrays is the indexes are zero based just like strings. So in fact that's one of the ways a string is stored is it's a, an array of characters and that's why it's also zero based. But uh, <clears throat> anyways, if I show you then how to go through this, um, the way I can access it is I use the square brackets. And this is called indexing. So I'd be going to this array, and I'd be going to index, and in my case, I'm going to index n. So whatever the current value of the loop is, and I will put it in as whatever the input is, get me the next line. Oops, sorry, it should be next int. So in this sense, what I've done is I've filled the array of values they've asked me for using a loop. Now um, I can go and take out whatever values or do something with it, like I could average them. So why don't we do that just to show you how I could access this data. Um, so to do an average, I'm going to need a sum. And I'll start at 0. So now when I go through this array, I'll say data index k is um, the value that I'm looking at right now, and I want to add that to the sum. So sum is what it was before plus that data. 
So this will add up the entire set of objects. And then down here, I can do a system.out.println command to tell me what the average is. So I'll just demonstrate this for you, we'll show you it in action, and then we can talk a little bit more about it. But let's just say I want five values, and I'm going to do um, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Um, because there's five of them and 10 is the middle, I should end up with 10 as my average here. So um, that's one way you, that arrays could be used. Um, but generally, when we talk about data structures and things when we're storing um, our work in computer science, um, arrays come up a lot because it's very convenient the way we're able to store data uh, side by side like this and access it with these uh, indexes like I'm showing you. So we'll just take a look at uh, some of the notes that I have for you just to kind of visualize it for you. Um, but one thing that you could also think about an array as, so we sort of think about it like this um, as the slots in memory. And in here I've declared an array of integers called scores and I've got five of them. So I would in index them from 0 to 4. That's my five slots. And um, each one of them corresponds to a spot in memory. So this would be, for example, the first position has the number 78, 84, 62, 93, and 97. So we could initialize them um, like this in Java. And what these curly brackets do is it tells Java how to fill in the indices of the array. So in that sense, Java knows there's five items, and it knows to put them in slots 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you could declare it like that um, when you get started. So maybe to help you see the indices, you could take a look like this and think, um, just like a string, if you're at index 0, that's the first item. And if this was the set of scores I had, these would be the values at each of the indices that I've been given. Now. We don't have to just initialize it like this all at once. We can also initialize individually, um, kind of like I did in some of the Java code that I typed. And that's to be able to use, um, once I've declared it, what I could do is I could access parts of the array just through the square brackets. So this would be assigning 98 to position 3, which is index 2. So this would assign all the values. You can stick a variable in those brackets as well. That variable has to be an integer, though. So here, in this case, it's 4. That would become 79. And you can also use the uh, array value, like refer to it, um, by putting it here on this side of the equals. So this is going to go to the array called scores, find index 3, which at the moment is 83, add 5 to that, and stick it in slot 0. So that's why there's an 88 here now. And I haven't initialized 1, but uh, Java would generally initialize integers to be a 0. So at this point, what you should be able to do is declare your own arrays. And you should be able to access the uh, elements inside of the array um, to either assign them, or in this case, to use them in your programs. Um, we will go further with it, but at this point in the video, I'm just going to stop here and I'll give you some basic exercises just to see that you're comfortable with it.